Hi, I'm Bob. In the last couple of videos, we have learned about consumers' budget constraints and consumers' preferences. The budget line contains all the combinations of goods the consumer can afford, given her income and the prices of goods. The indifference curve represents all the bundles of goods that provide the consumer with the same satisfaction. A higher indifference curve is preferred to a lower indifference curve. Today, we will find the consumer's optimal consumption choice to maximize her utility subject to her budget constraint. We use the consumer's budget line for noodles and ice cream cones. Her income is $100 per day. The price of noodles is $5 per bowl. The price of ice cream is $2 per cone. Keep in mind that the consumer fully uses her income for the consumption bundles on the budget line. She cannot afford the consumption bundles outside the budget line, and she has not used all her income for the consumption bundles inside the budget line. We add the consumer's indifference curves to the graph. The indifference curves represent her preferences for consuming different bundles of ice cream and noodles. We draw the budget line and the indifference curves on the same graph. There were an infinite number of indifference curves representing different levels of utilities. I draw three of them. Let's compare three points, A, B, and C. They are on the same budget line, so they are all affordable. Points B and C are on the indifference curve, I1, but point A is on a higher indifference curve, I2, meaning that the consumer obtains a higher level of utility or satisfaction than points B and C. Although all three points are affordable, point A is the most preferred combination of noodles and ice cream cones. The indifference curve I3 represents an even higher preference, but all the points on I3 are outside the budget line and therefore are not affordable. Thus, combining the budget line with the indifference curves, we find that point A is the consumer's optimal consumption choice. It is affordable because it is on the budget line. It maximizes the consumer's utility because it is on the highest possible indifference curve. At point A, the slope of the indifference curve is the same as the slope of the budget line. That means the marginal rate of substitution is equal to the relative price of the two goods. We say that the indifference curve is tangent to the budget constraint. In our example, the relative price of noodles in terms of ice cream is 5 divided by 2, that is 2.5 ice cream cones per bowl of noodles. So the slope of the indifference curve at point A is equal to 2.5. Suppose we use the Cobb Douglas utility function, u equal to q1 to the power 0.5 times q2 to the power 0.5 to express the indifference curves. Then from the last video, we know that the marginal rate of substitution is Q2 over Q1. At point A, marginal rate of substitution equals 2.5. So Q2 over Q1 equals 2.5. We also know that point A is on the budget line, so 5 times Q1 plus 2 times Q2 equals 100. 
solve the two equations, and we can find the solution for the optimal consumption bundles. Q1 equals 10, and Q2 equals 25. The relative price is the rate at which the market is willing to change ice cream for noodles, whereas the marginal rate of substitution is the rate at which the consumer is willing to change ice cream for noodles. At the consumer's optimal choice, the consumer's valuation of the two goods as measured by the marginal rate of substitution equals the market's valuation as measured by the relative price. As a result of this consumer optimization, the market prices of the goods reflect the value that consumer place on the goods. There is an alternative way to describe the optimal consumption choice. Since the marginal rate of substitution can be expressed as the marginal utility ratio, the utility ratio equals the price ratio. We can rearrange the equation and have the following expression. This equation has a simple interpretation. At the optimal choice, the marginal utility per dollar spent on good one equals the marginal utility per dollar spent on good two. If this equality did not hold, the consumer could increase her utility by spending less on the good that provided lower marginal utility per dollar and more on the good that provided higher marginal utility per dollar. The last dollar spent on either good at the optimal bundle gives the consumer the same utility. Thank you for watching this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. See you next time.